Oh, so I was just, I was just sitting there like, the worst of this, our, our, our lives don't do justice to God. Hallelujah. If you cannot describe him, amen. The worst of this English language, they cannot, de- they cannot describe God. Hallelujah. He's small than we can imagine. The Bible says, no eye has seen him. No eye, no eye, no ear, no heart has perceived what God has in store for them that love him. But this, the spirit of holiness has revealed to them that love him. Hallelujah. The spirit of God is so, so critical to our survival in this life. Hallelujah. Many, many people have come up with ideas and they, I mean, great ideas, but the only thing that they have to show for is the piece of paper on which that plan or idea was written. Hallelujah. Something needs to carry this idea and this power along. And for us, we are blessed to have the spirit of holiness. Amen. The thing that Christ said, it is the spirit of God that will carry you. I would say we are sealed with the Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. Hallelujah. What he has started, he will finish it. Hallelujah. What God has started, he will finish it. I want to promise that if you hang on to him, what he has started in your life, he will finish it. Amen. Don't worry about the ups and downs. Amen. If you are faithful, you are going to stay the course and let God be God. What he has started in your life, you will finish it. Hallelujah. But it is time for us to begin to know who this God is. Hallelujah. So uh, last week, we started last week. Who do you see? What are you seeing? Amen. Your Kun, Ken Hiruzia has that. The things that you are dependent on, that you thought was that what made you, that made you, gave you that stability in this life. That thing is gone. It is gone. But God made it so, so that you will see him. Because he is the reason why you are here. Hallelujah. It is not King Hosea. Amen. It is not your money. It is not your achievements in this life. All those things are good. And no, it's God that gave you the ability to have those things in the first place. Amen. It was God that helped King Hosea. But when he became strong, he thought it was by his power. But this morning, I came to make you aware of the Father. Until you begin to acknowledge the Father, it is God that gives you the ability to do whatever you do. You never reach what he planned for you in this life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to go back to um, Isaiah, the same thing, Isaiah 6, verse 1. I think we'll start from verse 8. I think we got to verse 8. But last week we could talk about a lot of things. Hallelujah. But when um, King Uzziah died, Isaiah just looked like everything that happened. There were rumors of wars. Everything was gathering. There was a new king. But Isaiah was not sure whether that king was up to the task. Amen. And he realized that the only way out was to go seek the man himself. Hallelujah. I lift up all my eyes onto the hills. From whence come at my help. Amen. I lift up my eyes. And Bible, no, no one thing. He got this revelation when he went into the temple. Hallelujah. We only see God when we make room for him. Amen. We go see his heart. When I went into the temple, then I understood. The understanding will come when we go seek God. Hallelujah. If you are going to things that are Tim, not to work for you. I'm, I, I came to let you know that what, it is time for you to go into the temple. Amen. Micaiah said that what? Um, they asked, they can, they, they can ask Micaiah, how do you know that God came to talk to you and not to us? He said, what, the day that you enter your temple, then you will hear. Hallelujah. When you go into your closet, you will hear what God is saying. Hallelujah. The children of Issachar, they understood the time. And because they understood the times, they, they knew what Israel ought to do in their time hallelujah if you want to understand what you need to do in this time it is time for you to go into the temple amen we have abandoned the temple for a long time and we are complaining about unnecessary things we think that the, the wicked is prospering and we are doing everything and nothing is happening for us god is calling on you to come so that you will uh, unveil last week we heard that when um Habakkuk came to understand it, that god was in control that he knew what he was doing then he said what do the fig tree does not produce hallelujah do everything ceases to do what they are supposed to do still will i rejoice hallelujah can you still say that word still will i rejoice when it's all said and done and everybody's cut you off can you still say that i know the one who have believed hallelujah i know the one who have believed amen the devil say a skin for skin a man will give anything up for his life but we say no we know the God that we are saying faithful is the one who has promised, and he also will do it. Amen. Bible says Sarah, he saw the one who has promised that he was able. He was more than able. Amen. Moses gave up everything because he saw the one who was invincible. How can you see somebody who's invincible? Hallelujah. But he knew there's something that you know when you get into the temple. Hallelujah. Nobody has seen God. Nobody has seen God. The Bible says what? If you see the sun, 
then you will know the Father. Amen. Because it's an express image of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning I came to encourage you to hang on to you. Hang on, hang on. Listen, the, the clouds are going to be dark and darker. Hallelujah. They are going to gather. The sun, you will see, no sun is shining through. But I want you to know that if you hang on to God, He will give you understanding. In the midst of darkness, you will see. Hallelujah. For Bible says, with God, darkness is like noonday. Darkness with God is like noonday. Hallelujah. What we deem as darkness, God is bright. It's as bright as anything. So we, verse 8, Isaiah says verse 8. This was when uh, um, um, Isaiah had complained about When he saw God revealed, he saw how worthless he was. Hallelujah. I was, uh, when, you, when, you, when you encounter him, that, that, that phrase that he said, that our righteousness, they are like 50 rocks before him. When you see a revelation of God, that you only see a revelation of God when you go into his temple. Amen. When you give yourself to his word, and this word takes over your life. Hallelujah. He said, I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send? And who shall go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. He didn't know what, what it was. Hallelujah. That's one thing. When you get into the presence and God takes over your life, you don't want to know what, what it is. You just want to do. Hallelujah. You just don't want to do. He didn't know what the, 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 the work was. Because then the, the next thing tell us what they told him to do. Hallelujah. Now, when the thing is that when he said that I'm a man of impure lips, the only thing that can consecrate you and me is that which is what Jesus Christ sacrificed. Amen. He took the, the hot this man was taking was taken from the sacrifice. The sacrifice of Christ. That is what can purge you and me. Amen. It is not a, what any man can see. It is not what any man can do. It is not anything that you and me can do. Amen. That is what we are seeing right now. People are deceiving people. The people who are supposed to be the people. Prophets who are supposed to lead God's people are deceiving people. They are deceiving us. Hallelujah. But it's not an excuse. See, the time of ignorance is past. Now it's not an excuse. You, are, you, you can study it for yourself. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is given to you and to me too. Hallelujah. But when we are praying that anybody that stands here will lead you to God. Amen. We we'll encourage you to seek God. Hallelujah. And he said, what? So when he was prepared and he was cleaned, then when the call came, he was ready to do it for God. Hallelujah. He surrounded it all. When God cleans you up, when he pages you, there's nothing more you want to do just to just surrender to him. Hallelujah. So let's look at the verse 9. Verse 9 says that, and he said, Go and tell these people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not. This is God. He said, go and tell the people. But you should not understand. Why is God saying that? Because for a long time, he's been talking to these people, and they've just been refusing. And it's like a Pharaoh. He said, let my people go. But he had in his heart. Amen. God is in the process of doing something. When people are, listen, it is time for us to stay and stand our ground. Hallelujah. He said, oh, go and tell these people. So he was telling Isaiah to go and preach the word. He didn't stop, just stop the word. Go and preach it. They will hear it, but they will not understand it. They will see it, but they will not perceive it. There's something here that I want you to see. That which makes you hear and understand and see and perceive is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God took away the Holy Spirit. The word was spoken by you. The Spirit that will give you understanding was taken away. Hallelujah. Why we need the Holy Spirit now more than ever before. Amen. He said, Tarry, wait, wait. This is what I said, wait. Wait. So you are what? You end up with power. And when he comes, he will lead you into all truth. You and me. There's no formula. I can't tell you a formula, but that's a, if you go and stand this way, the Holy Spirit will come. There's no formula. If you make room for him, he will come. Hallelujah. There's the food of the Spirit is the word of God. If you give yourself to the word of God, the one that wrote the word of God, the one that inspired the word of God will come and brood and enlighten the word of God into your hearts. Hallelujah. If you give yourself to the word of God, listen, there's no formula to it. Sometimes somebody stands here and preach and you are, oh my God, I wish I could be like that. There was no formula. He, they, they dedicated themselves to studying the word of God. Give yourself to the word of God and see what God will do in your life. Hallelujah. Give yourself. Sometimes God allows these difficult times to come. And that is when you have to make that decision. Don't waste that time of sorrow and grief. Hallelujah. It is God taking away your Uzziah so that you can see who he is. Hallelujah. 
that he is more than anything that you can think for. Amen. Whatever it is that you are, you are looking for, when he takes away that uzia, that thing that you are worried about, he will become all of that for you. Hallelujah. And you know it is pure because it is coming from the most high God. He said, go. Tell them they will hear, but they will not understand. They will not, they will see, but they will not perceive. Hallelujah. The spirit of God, he took it away because he had, the word of God had come several times and they what? They had refused God. Hard-hearted. And the will of God had to be performed. Amen. What God has said had to come. The judgment had to come. We say it well, as we heard in the, in the revive your works in the midst of the year, but in no judgment, they ought to remember mercy. Hallelujah. God always knows that if we who are serving, if you give yourself, it doesn't matter what is happening out there, God knows how to take care of His church. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Don't fear. Hallelujah. Know that if you're going to seek God, no matter what happens. You may lose your leg, but know that God knows how to take care of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look let's, at let's verse 10. He said, and so look, he said, make the heart of these people fat. Make it fat. So it is dull, dull to hear. Amen. And make their ears what heavy and shut their eyes. Amen. The, the, the words that I was going to speak, this was the, the, the effect. Because you are taking the spirit of God away. Least they, they see with their eyes. Hey, so you saw what they say? Least they see with their eyes. They see with their eyes. You just see there? I thought it was me alone. It's not my glasses. And hear with their ears. And understand with their heart. And then again and be healed. So look at, look at verse 10. Look at how he did the first time. The first time he went out the heart, the ears, and the eyes. Amen. Bible says it is not what goes into you that corrupts, it's what comes from you. Amen. When the heart is corrupted, when everything that comes to the eyes and the ears will be caught. So, first of all, he dist- the heart is knocked off. Hallelujah. So, everything that is coming out is just waste. And then the second is what? Least they see their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn again and be healed. Amen. So, he destroyed it both ways. The heart goes dull and everything that comes out is destroyed. Amen. It's just waste. And then it's the way they can go, they will hear, and also he knocks it up. He said, their, their eyes. Because you hear with your, with your ears and our eyes, but say, by hearing, faith is born. Amen. And when faith is born, the heart is healed. Hallelujah. First, the heart is destroyed so that what's coming out is waste. And then for you even to get that chance to come back and get the heart healed, God knocks it all off. Hallelujah. When people, when we are resistant to the will of God, and God desires to allow his way to go on. Hallelujah. His, no man will survive. Amen. He knocks it both ways. Hallelujah. First, it was a heart heavy. And ears heavy. Shut their eyes. Say so they can't see. And now he said, oh, shut their eyes. They are not hear their ears. And they don't understand that what they will turn again and be healed. Let's go to verse 11. Verse 11. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until cities be waste without inhabitant, houses without man, and land utterly waste. Amen. He was, to, this, he was talking about Israel. He wasn't to wipe everything away. They were carried into captivity. But no one thing, when Israel was carried into captivity, that's when what the word of God was carried along. Hallelujah. Where everywhere they went, they, they took God along. Hallelujah. Sometimes when God is, you know, look at it, our apostles, when, when, when persecution came, that was when the word of God was spread. Hallelujah. Can we trust God? And no matter what is coming our way, God has a plan. He knows what he is doing. Hallelujah. And can we just hold on? Hold on to him. Amen. You're going to fall. He said the righteous man will fall seven times, but seven times you will rise again. Hallelujah. God, he has made provision for you and for me. Hallelujah. Can we trust him, be faithful, and hold on to him? Because the accuser of the brethren will always be saying the same thing. He will always be accusing us. But Christ tells us that. I, I shed my blood for him. Hallelujah. The sacrifice was made for you and for me. Okay, so let's go to verse 12. I'm going to put it all together. And, and, Je- and Jehovah have removed men far away and forsaken the places. Be many in the midst of the land. Verse 13, that's the last verse. And if there be, and if there be yet a tent in it, it shall in turn be eaten up as a tiny bit and as an oak. Which stock remained, and when they are filled, so the holy seed is in the stock thereof. Hallelujah! So I'm going to I, I, I'm going to just put it all together. So he was saying, "What? This is how long? God's it is a time for God's judgment. Amen. It's going to come and it will set to and after that. I will say, 
but there'll be a tent in it. Hallelujah. The people who inquire of God, you and me faithfully, God says that what? You will return. Hallelujah. You will return. He said, what? They will, the tent that will return, they will still what, be eaten up. Hallelujah. That means that they, so these people, the Israelites, when they, when they were gone, the, the, those who were left, the the Assyrians came and knocked them off. The Assyrians came and knocked them off. And then the Romans also came. And so whatever is left, somebody comes to cut it off. Whatever is somebody comes to cut it off. Not the, but he said, but the stock that is left, hallelujah. The, I was with the commentary said, the, in that stock is the holy seed. That stock is the holy seed, hallelujah. There's something that... Who, who, that, what that has to stay inside of you that no matter what comes and takes off that thing so long as it's there god says that what, it shall grow again hallelujah and that is the word of god hallelujah we have to get the word of god inside of us hallelujah we have to get it inside of us let it get it, listen let it come inside of you because that is the holy seed the seed that will remain it is not a, it's not the tree and the leaves. They will all be cut off and they will all go. But the stump that is left is what is going to. The Bible says a shoot will arise from the stump. Hallelujah. And that is the seed. The seed is the word of God. We have to give more diligence to the word of God now more than ever before. Amen. We have to give diligence. Listen, you have to start from somewhere. There is no formula to it. Listen, my formula may not be a formula, but start from somewhere. Hallelujah. Start from somewhere. Don't wait because the time is not on our side. Amen. Yes, last we hear the time is now. Our time is now. Time is not on our side. Let's give ourselves to the word of God. Diligence to the word of God. You see, those who will come, those who will return, who are supposed to be the hope of Israel, they will also be eaten up again. But he said, but the stock will remain. I would say, at the scent of water, at the scent of water, hallelujah, the spirit of holiness. If you have that seed in you, I told you, if that seed is there, that is the, that is the cry, that, that is the trigger for the Holy Ghost. Once the seed of God is there, the word of God is inside of you, he will come and brood over it. And he will open your eyes. He will enlighten your eyes. Amen. He will enlighten your eyes. Hallelujah. You will have an understanding. Be, be, because it is so important for you and me to understand in these times why the word of God is important to us. Hallelujah. Because what is coming through the airwaves and what we are reading, some of the things that we are seeing is so discouraging. Sometimes you fear. But the only thing that gives you peace is the word of God. Amen. In that word of God. Amen. So I'm going to look at some verses. Why well, we have to go to the word of God. Let's go at um, Hosea 6 verse 3. Hosea 6 verse 3. And, and let us know. Other verses are, then we will know. If we will follow on to know Jehovah. His going forth is as sure as the morning. He will come to us as the rain. As the latter rain, we watch it what the earth. Hallelujah. You see, then we will know if we follow on to know Jehovah. Hallelujah. How do we know God? How do we know God? Between you and me, how do we know God? He gave us a manual, the Bible. Hallelujah. There's, there's no other way. Everything I'm telling you is my opinion. It is I'm, yeah, I'm in the Bible, but I've added my own shenanigans to it. Hallelujah. You know, but God is... Don't, Anything that we tell you is supposed to encourage you to go know God for yourself. Have your own experiences with God. Hallelujah. Some things that God does, you know, all these people who saw Isaiah, Moses, all those people who saw God, they had a vivid experience with God to the point that it never left them. Hallelujah. So in the midst of the difficulties, they remember the God that they experienced. Hallelujah. You need to have that one for yourself. Amen. I can tell you my story. Amen. And to, to inspire you by you have to have one for yourself because a time will come when you will need that experience. You can call on that experience that the God that delivered me, David said what? The God that got me out of the mouth of the, the, the bear and the lion, that same God will take you down. That's what he told you. Goliath. He had an experience. The soldiers of Israel, they ran away. They had no experience. He has seen what God could do. Amen. He has seen what God could do. Hallelujah. So when, when he came to the top, when everybody was disappearing, he said, I have a God who delivered me 
when nobody was there, it was just me and him. You, I came to let you know that my story, his story, whatever your story is, you have to have one for yourself. Amen. God is calling for a personal, intimate experience with you. So that it will be a vivid and experience, vivid. Nobody can take it away from, from you. Amen. Nobody can take it away. Because if you see what God has done for you, you know that this one, it is nobody else but God. Hallelujah. It is nobody else but God. So that when things get difficult, you can still trust God. Then we will know. If we follow on to know Jehovah, then there's a column. He's trying to accept. He's going forth. His deliverance of your life is as sure as the morning. What God is doing in your life, it is sure. He's going forth in your life, defending you, delivering you, taking you out of the pit, putting you on the rock to stay. It is as sure as the morning. Amen. He will come to us as rain. As the latter rain, that rot rain. And he said rain. He didn't say a storm. Rain. Because it comes gently so that you can take your time and absorb it. Hallelujah. He's going to come gently. Hallelujah. He's going to take his time so that he packs his, himself into you. As you make room and you open up, God is going to come as rain. He will water your ground. He will pack himself into you. You absorb it. And Bible says, the latter rain is always, it comes around March, uh, spring, so that the crops can grow faster, you know, and get ready for harvest. Hallelujah. He comes, he, he, he has the former rain. That is when the seed is sown. And then the latter rain. He, so he starts it and he finishes it. Hallelujah. He starts it and he, thought he will come to us rain. But he thought we will know if we follow on to know. Hallelujah. You have to follow on to know God. It is not what I'm telling you. Amen. That is not what I'm telling you just to encourage you to go do it yourself. Hallelujah. Get your own experience. God is waiting. He said, my hands are, he's waiting. He said, I stand at the door and knock. If you open the door. Amen. Ask and you shall find. Seek. Knock and the door will be open unto you. Keep knocking. Sometimes you, you knock one, two, and nothing is happening. Keep knocking because the door, the one who is behind it, will open the door. Hallelujah. He's, as, he's, he's going forth. It's as sure as the morning. What God has said in your life, that is it is as sure as the morning. Hallelujah. As sure as the morning. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen. But we have to follow on to know him. We have to follow on to know him. This morning I came to let you know we have to follow on. He said, he said then you will know. Oh, so because when you experience it, he said, nobody can take it away from you. Nobody can take it away because you experience it. Amen. It was not it is your experience. Hallelujah. This is holy ground. That is when you take your shoes off. Anything, anything, because he wants to have that. Say, so take your shoes, but this is holy. Take your shoes because he wants to have contact, they have skin to skin, hallelujah, flesh to flesh, hallelujah, spirit to spirit. He wants to have you to himself, hallelujah. There's so much he wants to pour into your life. He said, He will come as rain if we will follow on to know, hallelujah. Let's look at um, Ephesians 1, verse 8. Uh, Ephesians 1. So, so this was Paul. The Bible says, when Paul got to know that the, the, the people of Ephesians, they, their, their faith was growing and, and, and they were loving each other. The Bible says, he, he, he made this prayer. I, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Let's look at verse 17. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom. That is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He is the author of wisdom, the Holy Ghost. And in the revelation of, of him. Hallelujah. In the, in the revelation, in the knowledge of, of him. This is what God, uh, Paul was praying for. It is time that we start fighting against each other. Let's pray for each other. Pray for each other. For this. When I, don't envy the person. Don't worry about whatever is going on. Pray that the Father of glory will give him the spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. Let's pray for each other that we'll get this. Let's pray for each other that we'll get this. Hallelujah. And in the revelation of him, let's look at verse 18. Having the eyes of your heart enlightened. Amen. The eyes of your heart enlightened. Amen. Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes what the issues of life. Amen. The eyes 
of your eyes. That what enlightenment. Another um, translation says what the eyes of your understanding. Hallelujah. You know, the children of Israel said, they understood Issachar. They understood the times, and because they understood the times, they knew what Israel ought to do. Hallelujah. When the eyes of your understanding is enlightened, when King Uziah dies, it will not take you away. Amen. Because you know that one day that thing has been taken away. Now you can see the Lord and throne on his throne. Hallelujah. And where everything is holy, holy, holy. The holiness of God and the omnipotence of God. How strong it is. That's why I said in the beginning, the words of this English language does not do what well, that is to the God that we serve. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. Amen. It, that, that you will know what is the hope of your calling. The hope of your calling. Why God has called you and me. What the riches of the glory of this inheritance in the saints are. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his might? Hallelujah. The power that God has made available to, to work on your behalf. You will you never know until you follow on to know Jehovah. Hallelujah. Because what, you see what he prayed about the, the eyes of the, the understanding. Jesus Christ prayed for disciples. That's before he was taken up into what, he prayed, Luke 24, 45. He said that the eyes were under, open. He opened the eyes so that they understand the scriptures. We have to understand it. Because then, then we can make the right decisions. Amen. You can make sometimes it just not, nothing looks good. Yes. But you can trust that God is still because what, he's coming for he's going forth. It's as sure as the morning. Amen. What he said to you is as sure as the morning. Can you hold on to that? Can you believe God to hold on to that word? That no matter what it is, you're going to just trust him. Hallelujah. Faithful is the one who has promised. And he also will do it. Amen. Because he judged him faithful who have promised. Sarah, he judged God faithful righteous judgment when the eyes of your understanding is enlightened all your judgments will be righteous hallelujah because you will know that they are based on what the word of god says amen and so what you will know that the ascending greatness of his power when as i saw the only you see he saw the, the angels around him these are powerful angels powerful angels six rings six wings Hallelujah. But when you read Ezekiel, you have eyes everywhere. You see everything. Hallelujah. He wants to exert he said, this power towards us who believe. You and me who believe. God has some power already to exert on your behalf. Uh, let's look at the, the next verse. Ne next verse. Is the next verse? Okay, but this is another part of scripture. I forgot to worry about But it's not. This same power that he's talking about is the same power that he exerted. In raising Jesus Christ up from the dead. Hallelujah. The power that God exerted in raising Christ up from the dead, that is the power that he, he has made available to you and me who believe. Hallelujah. And what is that power? That is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That is the Holy Spirit. There's a mystery, mystery of God, which is Christ. And the only person that will make you understand this mystery is the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I'm telling you, if he gets, get, there's no formula, but if you will study the word of God, the one who wrote the word, the Holy Ghost, the one who inspired these words to come forth, if you give yourself to it, you will come and brood over this thing. And this word will come like rain into your spirit. Amen. You will absorb it. It will ground you. You will not be, you will not be making rash decisions. You, all your decisions, like I said, Will be righteous decisions, amen. Let's look at something um, in Job. You don't have to put Job in there, Job um, 29, verse 21. You know, I had to put Job in there, but Job. So, this is Job talking, but I want you to see uh, it's like, like God talking to us. He said, Unto me, men gave ye. Job, when everything was gone, he was trying to reminisce the, the good times, hallelujah. The funny thing, like anytime Job was saying these good things, that was when his friends were actually at him hard. They were coming after him hard. And he was remembering like good times with God. Hallelujah. He said, unto me, men gave ear and waited and kept silence for my counsel. Hallelujah. Can we say the same? That we keep silent for the counsel of God. 
It's unto me. Men gave here. Do we give ear to the word of God? Hallelujah. And we wait and keep silent for the counsel of God. Hallelujah. He said in those times, the words of Ahithophel, they were like the very oracles of God. Amen. When he spoke, nobody spoke again. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 22. After my words, they speak not again. My speech distilled upon them. After God's words, if we give ourselves to God and we follow on to know him, when he speaks, nobody, because you can't, you, 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 there is no disobedience. There is no opposition. You can't add to it and you can't take away. When he speaks, it is complete. Hallelujah. When he speaks, what? After my, when I speak, nobody speak again. My speech distilled upon them. So he comes like the latter rain. Hallelujah. It to this. And then look at verse 23. They waited for me as for rain. Hallelujah. They waited for me as for the rain. And they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. Can we have this kind of um, attitude or. Can God say the same of us? Hallelujah. See, can we say that we waited for God as for the rain? Amen. The way the farmer waits for the rain. Hallelujah. Because when the rain doesn't come, when the latter rain doesn't come, the fruits, don't, don't, they, don't, they will ripe, but they will not be like they are supposed to be. Hallelujah. They waited for me as like for the rain. They opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. Verse 24. I smiled on them when they had no confidence. When they had no yacht, I smiled on them. The light of my countenance, they cast not down. Hallelujah. I smiled on them when they had no confidence. When it was all said and done, people had counted the yacht. God said he smiled on you. Hallelujah. And that smile of God will bring back the confidence. So don't cast away your confidence because he has great reward. Hallelujah. Can we say that we will wait for the word of God? Can we say? Can we say for sure? Between you and me, I came to let you know that for everything, what are you seeing? Something, what are you seeing? If you're going to see something, it is because you have studied the word of God. And because of what you have studied, it makes you see something. Hallelujah. That in the midst of all the chaos and the darkness and the clouds that are gathering, that is giving everybody false hope and fear and everything. You only see the most high God. Bible says he's going forth. It's as sure as the morning. Hallelujah. Can you begin to tell yourself that what the God that I serve, he's going forth for me. He's going forth. It's what his deliverance for you. His healing, his provision, his mercy, his grace, that his power that is made available to you. It's as sure as the morning. But don't be saying, say they waited for me. They wait. Are we waiting for God like we are waiting for rain? Hallelujah. You see, he smiled on them when they had no confidence. When they had no confidence, this is God. I smiled on you. Hallelujah. Listen, your King Uzia, that is dead. When he comes here, last, last week I told you, last two weeks I told you that God can be everything. When you need heat, you'll be heat. Amen. When you need light, you'll be light. Amen. When he need water, he'll be water. Hallelujah. He's not the one who, uh, listen, he, can, he, he has no disdain for the, what, the vessel in which he is poured into. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what people have made you out to be, what they have said about you. Hallelujah. If you open up to God and let God come in, the way you are, he will fill it up. He will fill you up. And then when his effect starts seeping into your system, you don't need, you don't need to tell anybody. They will see it. That this one, he has been with the Lord. Hallelujah. This one, he has been with the Lord. You know, people, people tell it's, it's, it's not titles. It's not titles. Double red brand and do, it's, it's not titles. Hallelujah. It is what availability, availing yourself to let God be God in your life. Hallelujah. Henry is what, like the, the opposite in verse 23. Let's go back to 23. I just like 23. Verse 23, they waited for me as for the rain. Can you say? If you cannot say it, it's never too late. Hallelujah. God is coming and asking us that we should wait for him. As for the rain. They opened their mouth wide. Their mouth, they opened it wide as for the latter rain. Look at Psalm 1, um, 119 verse 111. 119 verse 111. 
And he just said, the old, the old. I came this morning. I'm almost done. What are you seeing? Amen. What are you seeing? But what, whatever you will see will depend on whether you have given yourself to the word of God or you have desired him. Amen. He said, where did God go to talk to you and not to us? Zedekiah asked Micaiah. He said, that you will know the day that you go into your closet. Hallelujah. A call to prayer. Hallelujah. A call to study the word of God. Hallelujah. A call. I want you to know. See so what? They will come and will be the tent that will come will be eaten up as well. The remnant will be eaten up as well. They will be knocked left and right. But he said, there's a seed in that stump that will grow again. Hallelujah. And that seed, that holy seed is the word of God. Amen. Get the word of God into you. They will cut you up and do whatever they want to do. Discourage you from every corner. But if that seed, that holy seed is in you, Bible says at the center of water, at the center of water, the Holy Ghost, when it comes, you will grow again. Hallelujah. You will grow again. You will shoot up like a shoot one more time. Hallelujah. I want you to know this morning that if you didn't get anything at all, I came to let you know that if we will follow on to know Jehovah, it will follow on, then we will know. Hallelujah. He's calling for us to have a personal experience with him. A personal experience. A personal experience. A personal experience. So that you will know. So that you don't, you don't start arguments. But you rather acknowledge and worship him. That he deserves all the praise. Bible says that in his temple, the cry in his temple is of glory. He is the father of all glory. That he will give you what? The spirit of wisdom, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And revelation knowledge of him. Hallelujah. That the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. If you give yourself to God, if you will make room for him, if you go to his temple, you will understand. Amen. He said, until I went into the temple, then I understood. Understanding only comes when you are in his presence. Hallelujah. And this morning, that is my call to you. What are you seeing? You are seeing despair, fear. Like the, thing, the things that made you, made you who you were, it's all gone. But I came to let you know that it's a better option. Hallelujah. There is a better option. That option is eternal. It's the most high God. He will not die. He will not change. Listen, the storms that you see here in the, in the presence of God, it is still the same. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't change in God's presence. Amen. There are no storms there. Hallelujah. There's no rain there. Amen. The winter, there's no fire. It is still in the presence of God. What he said, that's what he will do. Amen. Nothing will change. His going forth is as sure as the morning. What you're seeing here are storms. And that's putting fear in you. I want you to know the one who directs the storm is God. Amen. Amen. And he said in his presence is the same yesterday. It's the same today. And to be the same tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? We thank God for this morning. We thank God for this morning. Come and bow down. Come and bow down. Bow down and worship Him. Bow down and worship Him. Just close your eyes. Just stay your mind on God. Your, your head at the word of God. In the short one, just, just focus on God this morning. It is not by any man. God is calling for an experience with you. He's waiting for that a time with you, one on one, just to know you, just so that you will know Him. He knows you inside out, but He's calling that you will just know Him. Follow on to know Him. He, there's, so much, there's so much power that He has made available for you to exert on your behalf, to work on your behalf, to defend you when your name is mentioned, to defend you when they call you up. The pits that they have dug for you, they will fall into the same pits themselves. God, God is on your side. He's calling for you and me to just make ourselves available. The spirit of knowledge. Holy Ghost, this morning we have come this morning. We beseech your presence this morning in our midst. Take away anything that has made us mighty or hard-hearted. That when God speaks, we don't hear. 
We don't want to be like these people when they will hear. But they will not understand. They will see, but they will not perceive. We don't want our hearts to be fat. We don't want our eyes to be shut. We have come this morning and we are asking for a, a quickening from above. A quickening from above. Turn us around one more time. Turn us and we will be turned. Save us and we will be saved, Lord. 